Hi there, and welcome back to Star Rail. I am right where I left off last time. I have not moved at all. Well, I've run around here a little bit, but that's about it. Anyway, I think um, let's check out the cabins then. And see what, el what else is over here. There seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. Who? Who's there? Tanan. It's me, Jenner. It's you. The door is not locked. Come in. Okay. Immediately nosing around, bookshelf is here. Book in the archives. Paperback documents are placed tidily on the shelf. Like Tanhan said, the content is very dense and some of it is even handwritten. Okay. What's on the bookshelf? Oh, this is my collection. So this is basically where it gets collected, I guess. That's nice. Any books that he has? Tanan's bed. That seems a bit... There is only one thing called... But it looks very warm. Being surrounded by all the books and records provides a surprising sense of security. But can he really sleep on such a hard bed? A hard bed is good for your spine. Bed that's too soft will end up hurting you. How did he know? Did my gaze betray me? Still, sure, yes, a hard bed is better for you, but that seems maybe a bit too hard. Can I help you? Just looking around. Feel free. This is open to everyone on the express. While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the express. I enter the collected data into the archives data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the express encounters and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already stored in the data bank. Do give it a go. The data bank uh, stores various information collected during trailblazing expeditions across the universe. Interesting, so this is where I can see the uh, character stories and voices that I'm... Alright, interesting. I will do that uh, a bit later. What about March? You knock, but there's no response. The door is unlocked. Should I go in? Just a little peek. One look should be fine, right? I don't quite understand why exactly March seventh has bought this mirror. Make a choice I won't regret. Reach the future. So much had happened in such a short time. This cozy rest area is in sp stark contrast to Tanhan's sparse floor, but this velvet blanket is soft to the touch and feels comfortable. Sitting on it feels just as comfortable, not sure about sleeping on it though. Oh, interesting. Pom Pom toy. A doll in the form of conductor Pom Pom. You have no idea where they found it. 
March 7th bed. Several photos are casually strewn on the, the way. Oh, I could see them. The computer station on the table comes pre-installed with the IPC's ADAR operating system. This OS might just cost more than the whole computer system. Of course it does. Our memories. was talking so slowly that I thought that that was it. The door is locked, but there's a peculiar scent of coffee coming out of the room. Oh. The door doesn't even move an inch, as if it is glued in space. Hey, I already missed some... a little bit of dialogue. Because the character was too slow. What is this? Oh. Seems that I started playing right before the daily reset. That's fine. Oh, March is here. Uh, there you are! Wait, this is your first trip! So that should be double the excitement, right? I'm ready. I'm ready to go. The first time I experienced a warp jump too, but I'm used to it now. Don't worry, you'll get used to it too. And before you know it, you'll be a mature and dependable passenger just like me. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. Um, okay. You really got it, huh? The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. Okay, I'm ready for step Seems three. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might. Really? I've cast it out. I've never been able to do it successfully myself. What does it feel like? Like all your worries have been swept away? Oh. This is your first time experiencing the warp jump, so a little discomfort is unavoidable. If you're really anxious about it, I can stay here and have a chat with you. About our companions. About everyone on the express? Who would you like to know about? March 7th. Did Himiko tell you about March 7th? She was trapped in ice, floating through space. We happened upon her and rescued her. It was a unique type of ice known as six-phased ice, a substance that adheres to imaginary law, meaning that external forces cannot change its form. Whoever sealed her inside the six-phased ice, no matter who it is, did so either to protect her or banish her. I believe she had been floating through space for some time. Interesting. I hope we get to know more about that eventually. About Himeka. <laughs> She's the owner of the Express. We joke around calling Pom Pom the conductor, but everyone knows Himiko is the boss. It all started with her encounter with the Astral Express, and they haven't been apart since then. She's extremely passionate, like a, a burning sun. However, she 
remains mysterious most of the time. Once in a while, you feel that she's burning herself out trying to accomplish her dream. Only someone like her is worthy of the Astral Express. I think Himiko's vision of her whole life revolves around uh, a very important dream. And about Pom Pom? To be honest, I don't know when Pom Pom appeared. Uh, I think it was before I came to the Express. No, wait, maybe it was after. Pom Pom is like the spirit of the Astral Express. Whenever anyone on the Express needs help, they will appear immediately. It would be ill-advised to underestimate them. Pom Pom is terrifying when they get angry. Yes, it's terrifying. Interesting. And Dan Hung? Dan Hung is a lonely child. He may appear distant and cold, but his heart is kind. Perhaps he's the way he is today because he spent so much time on the run. Sometimes he reminds me of myself when I was young. We don't know what he's running from. He once told me that he didn't know either. All he knew was that something was chasing him and that he had to run away. First from the Sienjo, then the IPC. So he boarded the ship of a troop called the Morning Actors and escaped the IPC. After a while, he made his way to the Express, and he's stayed here longer than anywhere else. Don't worry. No matter who or what wants to hurt Don Hung, we won't let them. Those who dare attack members of the Astral Express should be prepared to suffer the wrath of me and Himiko. That's nice. About Stellarons. It's impossible to trace the origins of this phenomenon. When it's observed by humans, or should I say, once it begins to affect the physical world, it's already too late to reverse. It's like a sudden storm that appears on a calm ocean. This phenomenon causes the smooth journey through the expanse to be filled with dangers. The mechanism whereby this mutation and corrosion spreads is the Stellarons. It promulgated rapidly, like cancer cells, so the Interastral Peace Corporation named it the Cancer of All Worlds. And how do the Antimatter Legion fit into They this? are the army ruled by the Eon of Destruction, Nanook. As Nanook's followers, they stand against all life and civilization and execute the will of destruction, disseminating chaos and calamity. Their actions cannot be explained by reason, because their only motivation and purpose is to destroy. Oh. Right. And Fragmentum? Fragmentums are a phenomenon of corrosion. The mainstream school of thought is that Stellarons catalyzed the appearance of Fragmentums. All matter and space that comes into contact with the Fragmentum will be turned into Fragmentum creations. However, you don't have to feel too burdened. At the very least, the current state of the Stellaron in your body is very stable and will not cause distortion to the outside. Yay. Good to know. This is your first time experience if you're really anxious. And it seems that everyone else is... Oh. I didn't even notice you. What's wrong? <laughs> you look like you were about to say something. Oh. I think I know what you're going to ask. You've come to the right person. About the Express. Ooh, you want to know more about the Express? I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. Is the Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it, but the Express has no such records. When I found the Express, its memory had been severely damaged, 
with much of its valuable information lost. All I know is that the Express is an aspect of creation built by Akivili themselves and used to travel the cosmos. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. Oh, and where is the Etated? The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana, Akivili's homeworld. We speculate the Astral Express started its journey from Pagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. However, the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, providing it with the power to travel between worlds. But I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's no way they could have had two hearts, right? However, it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. It wouldn't be possible with a normal path strider. Interesting. And about Takivili? The fallen eon, deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. In the data bank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Akivili enjoyed a freedom similar to us mortals. They were different from most. But their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another eon. I don't believe that to be the case. About the whole galaxy. <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. Oh, about it. Um, what about its nature? <laughs> I've been to many different worlds, yet I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes. Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary and emanators who are blessed by eons can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. That's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. However, the theory has its flaws. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory. There are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. So we are all living in a dream, I guess. Eons are the most mysterious beings in the galaxy. All we know is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. As for the how and why, even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. Upon ascending to eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy however they wish while suffering the restrictions of the Prima Mobile. The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. A cloud of mystery shrouds the Eons. I heard Madame Herta recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them. That will be difficult, uh, it seems. And about the Compared factions? Compared to the Eons, the factions are much easier to understand. Mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of Eons and Paths. Many Eons are unreachable, but the factions are close to us. 
After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, people became aware of the existence of other worlds. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the eons to travel between worlds. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, the eon of preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herda who dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. Makes sense. And paths? The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. The nature of the paths remains a mystery, leaving us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. If the person has a strong enough will, they can draw power from that path. Those who can do so are called path striders. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant compared to the eons, like a drop of water in a vast ocean. Sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power, making them an emanator of that eon. I should mention that once a path is open, it cannot be closed even with the fall of its eon. That is how we are still able to travel across the stars, despite Akivili's passing. And about the trail pay Trailblaze them. is our mission, and the source of strength that powers the Express to travel across the galaxy. Explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead. I do like exploring unknown worlds. Understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it. That is also interesting to do and see and experience. Establish a connection with the new world. Rejoice with it and share in its fears. Connect worlds together, carving an endless path. Right. I think we have talked to everyone. Or talked to everyone. And he is um, watering that plant. <sighs> you took long enough, but at least everyone's here now. I just wanted to talk to everyone. Where is Tanhan? He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny What's this? bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. Oh. Five travel encounters, which are basically XP books, and 10,000 credits. Oh, I get a lot of this stuff. Stellar Jade on top. A regular pass. Light cone XP. Another pass. Okay, everyone, hurry up and find a place to sit down. Try not to be like March, always running around the express like a headless chicken. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. Today is yesterday's tomorrow. The voyage continues complete. Feature available, friends. Yeah, that one I understood. Wait for the jump. Are you ready to move on to the next planet? What's the next stop for the express? The universe. The astral express. 
eons. <sighs> Did I get dragged into a science fiction movie or something? This Stellaron thing in my Are body? You <laughs> <the stars? laughs> I've done stuff like that before. But it wasn't stars for me, though. It was lights. When I first woke up after being rescued from the ice, I could see clusters of stars in front of me. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. Rescue from the ice? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. Do I, rem do I remember what happened before you were frozen? I don't remember a thing. Who I am, where I'm from, my name. It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. I hope so too. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? Sorry. It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Uh... <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about 10 minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself and falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you. Uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's over. But I'm thirsty now. I wonder if the main character, the the conscious of the main character. I know that the the main character is a blank slate of sorts, but uh, it feels like the conscious is from another time entirely. Oh, don't worry about me. I just want to see if I can stay on my feet this time. Good luck, I'm rooting for Thanks. you. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. The key is using your core, waist, and leg muscles. It's not your stance that matters, but your ability to ride the inertia. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. Okay. Jumps are like this. They may feel novel the first few times, but you'll slowly get used to them after a few more. As for the mechanism, well... If you're interested, I'll explain it to you in detail when we have more time. For now, just sit and wait. Remember to close your eyes. It helps with the dizziness. Our next stop is a small planet called Eurelo 6. It's been thousands of years since the last time the Express paid a visit. The databank shows it was a lush and beautiful place. But after all this time, it's possible that dramatic changes have occurred. That'd be interesting to see. A very comfortable sofa feels like you'll fall right to sleep after sitting on it. Hold on tight and wait for the jump to finish. Hello? Hello, hello? <clears throat> all passengers, please return to your seats. The train is about to make the jump. Hold on, everyone. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. Five, four, three, two, one. After all 
those millennia. Is this what Eurelo 6 has become? Uh-huh. So, that snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Ugh, spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven day stop over time extended indefinitely. Anomaly? Hmm. The complex locality of this world has been affected somehow. The star rail has been blocked off by something. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. It's gotta be what? The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a Stellaron, as always. Oh, okay. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. What exactly is a Stellaron? Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them. But there's no need to worry. This isn't the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Even if we don't know much about them, at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Eurelo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. Why can't the people in the worlds affected save themselves? No. So we're like a chivalrous band of cosmic knights. This is my favorite answer. Right! You finally get what we're all about! Pretty cool, huh? Yep. It is. I'd like to entrust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions, and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Hey. You're not coming? Someone has to stay on the train or Pom Pom will get lonely. Not to mention, Nanook threw us a glance just now. If we're targeted by the Antimatter Legion, then things could go south fast. Nanook to destruction. The I think if I remember correctly, that might be the Um the boss that we fought at the space station near the beginning of the game. Or the final boss of the tutorial. So it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for your Relo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. In the withering wintry night, a grand cool adventure. Ever since the destruction sowed Stellarons across the universe, Many worlds have changed. Nanook, the destruction, Yausha, the abundance, Terminus, the finality. I've seen and learned a lot in my time, but I still struggle to understand some of the Eon's actions. Thanks to a brilliant performance, you guys saved the space station from a moment of crisis. 
Now, the Express is relying on you to get it moving again. Remember, there are four things we do when we arrive at a new world. Explore, understand, establish, and connect. And I'm sure you'll get along really well with Marge and Dan Hung. Oh, I'm sure I will. Definitely. So this is the planet that we are going on. It's completely covered in snow. But it doesn't seem to be 100% frozen. At least the oceans seem to be fine. Which means it isn't cold enough for no civilization to be able to survive on it. But it is really cold anyway. Each stop brings its own grand and exciting adventure. Have we been on an adventure before, Pom Pom? <sighs> no. Pom Pom can't leave the train right now. Hmm. Pom Pom's so dejected all of a sudden. How's my trail place level? Okay. Can I ask Each anything else? Brings its own grand and Have you been to Charilo 6 before, Pom Pom? No. Pom Pom can't leave the tree. Mm -hmm. Pom Poms. Oh. Hey, much. A planet covered in snow and ice. Will I find my answer here? Whoa! <sighs> Don't sneak up on me like that. Why are you still Sorry. here? Go find Don Hong. Exciting adventures are waiting for us. Okay, okay. Are you doing okay after your first jump? Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. You'll feel better once you get used to it. That's what they're saying. I feel fine. Hmm. So you have high compatibility with the Express. That's good. I went through the Express's database, and it seems the environment on Urelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. Welt says it was caused by a Stellaron. He said so? Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. By normal, I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. Emeka wants you, me, and March 7 to go together. Uh, as I expected. Before you came, whenever March wanted to go anywhere, Himiko would make Mr. Yang and me go with her. And even after you arrived, I didn't suppose I'd be the one to be... liberated of that duty. I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Urelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail. Right? I yep. see. You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. Okay. Did you talk to Don Hung? How'd it go? Full of enthusiasm. Really? I find that hard to believe. Relax. Don Hung and I are experienced trailblazers. We got your back. Well, are you ready? You bet. When I first saw this planet, I thought... A world covered in ice. Could it have something to do with my past? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Still, the ice that trapped me was six-phased ice. A very rare substance. I don't think you can find it on your average planet. It's uh, basically not a natural ice, I guess. Uh, but on this planet, it's probably closer to natural. We won't know unless we have a look ourselves. To be honest, I 
think I'd be kind of annoyed if I found out this was my home world. It looks freezing. Pretty girls aren't frost resistant. True. What? Is there something on my face? Nah, I was just imagining all the fun we're gonna have here. <laughs> mm. I feel sorry for this world. First the Stellaron, and now you. Let's go. All right, here comes the Urelo 6 Trailblaze team. My seventh uh, enthusiasm is great. Urelo 6, we're here. It really is one big snowball. It really is one big snowball. Hey, get your own metaphor. <laughs> I like the face. <sighs> Snow as far as the eye can see. Which direction should we take? Based on the coordinates, the target should be up ahead. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Why didn't we land at the destination? Hmm. Do you want to mention the time we smashed a hole through Taikian Stadium? Or shall I? Oh. Makes sense. Oh, please stop bringing that up. Let's just say that landings and crowds don't mix. Unless you enjoy trailblazing through two weeks of community service. I said drop it! Remember, we should stay vigilant. We know very little about this world. Calm down. Between the three of us, nothing will stand in our way. I mean, come on. You've got a Stellaron in your body. I have my special six-phase ice powers. And Don Hung... Uh... He's got that mysterious past thing going for him. Six-phased, aka mysterious ice crystal. So if people start creating trouble for us, they're gonna regret it. Come to think of it, maybe somehow she herself was able to uh, encase herself in ice, trying to get away from something. Maybe. Because she has those same powers, or um, I guess it could also be that uh, she comes from a world where people have that kind of a power. Let's just make sure that we are not the ones creating trouble. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> let's go. Braving the unknown? That's the real spirit of trailblazing. Thanks to the navigation system of the Astral Express, you can travel between different worlds and areas. The worlds that you have been to will be marked on the Star Rail map. And straight to checking every corner. For stuff. What is the space anchor? Oh. Right, this is one of those spots where I can teleport to. This place still hasn't been corroded. Yet fragmentum monsters have already made it here. I fear the Stellaron may be ex- Step aside. I have uh, no interest in stoking conflict. My bad. Reach the end of the story in your own way. Please continue the dialogue. What a strange object. It seems really out of place in the snow plains. Maybe Mr. Young will know what this is. Let's send a message to ask him. Photo. What is this, Mr. Young? He 
It is a calyx, a strange entity born from the pheno phenomenon of space distortion. There are some reality data they in the galaxies that might come in handy, but please be careful when coming in contact with them. The existence of these galaxies is still a mystery to us, and the danger within is incalculable. In your coming journey, you might come across other galaxies like this, and the reality data stored in different galaxies may vary. So look out for that. Okay. So this one gives XP, materials and credits. Let's try it. So this is the different amount of waves that I can do at the same time. In one go. And this is level 1. This is level 32, but requires equilibri equilibrium level 1. Up to level 4, which is level 62. Let's test how easy or difficult this is. Clemency? Never heard of it. <laughs> Time for the main event. Keep up! My tempo! Um yeah. right there while I give you a present. Better up. Just a scratch. Try that again. You can't run. Step aside. I have no interest in stoking katanas now. Pretty good crowd today. <laughs> My turn. <sighs> Seems that they're pretty easy, so one way is definitely super easy. Let's try two. Or three even. Because I one shot them then I can probably do more. Let's do all six at once. Clemency? Never heard of it. <laughs> Time for the main event. Turn up the volume! With me out here, how can we lose? And it was. <laughs> the truth of life. Time for the main event. Revealed in an instant. This sanctuary is but a vision. Keep up. My tempo. You have the worst luck running into me. Right there, while well, I give you a present! Gotta try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move! <laughs> this is our chance. Good hits. <laughs> Rules are made to be broken. to repent. The time is now. Turn up the volume. 
This is our chance. Clemency? Ready to lose yourself? Never heard of it. Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. Sunstorm achievement. Keep up. My tempo. My turn. With me out here, how can we lose? Let's go. Wave five. <laughs> Time to turn up the volume. You have the worst luck running into me. Watch this. This is our the chance. cold equations. Achievement. <laughs> are made to be broken. Decisive strike! Physical breaker Step one. Aside. I have no injury times now. Last wave. <laughs> Time for the main event. Keep up! My tempo! My turn! The truth of life and death revealed in an instant. This sanctuary... Is but a vision. Great. Ready to lose yourself? Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. Let's make it quick. Easy. Three hundred trail plays XP. 18 uh, XP box blue ones, 18 uh, green ones, and then 3000 credits. That's fine. And now I'm train place level 12. Is there anything over here? Yes, there is. These buildings have been buried in the snowfall. Huh? So. These are rooftops? How long would snow have to fall to get this thick? A long, long time. A long time indeed. Again, story, story dialogue started right it's too late to repent. near the boss or the sometimes. enemy. Check that is not good. <laughs> not good at all. Past victories don't guarantee future ones. Breath won't help. I got this, March. Uh, someone's got their head stuck in the sand, or the snow in this case. They just need a helping hand. Out! My fine fellow, was that really necessary? Is crawling around in the snow a crime these days? I mean, come on, surely it doesn't warrant a spearing. Well, you weren't coming out. But then again, how can I blame you? I mean, I caught you off guard. It, it had to happen. You could even say I deserved it, huh? Besides, I made a gallant group of new friends as a result. <laughs> Is Captain Jappard around? Uh, he, he's an old buddy of mine. Who? 
Wait, you're not Silvermane guards? Well, why didn't you say so? Turns out we're on the same side after all. Pleasure to meet you. The name's Sampo Koski. I'm Lenner. Excellent. I'll remember the name. Never thought I'd run into friends from the same line of work out here in this frozen wasteland. <sighs> Business is bad these days, but fear not. Sampo Koski isn't interested in hoarding. There's more than enough treasure to go around, so let's get rich together. <laughs> that is not Say, exactly. Why don't we join forces? I have reliable intel. The main strength of the Silvermane Guards is being deployed to the front line. This is a golden opportunity. Sil Silvermane Guards. Come now, friends. I can understand the mistrust, but there's no need for the charade. Then again, I know the rules. Vigilance is the name of the game in our profession. It's my fault for letting my enthusiasm and sincerity get the better of me. Anyway, a meeting like this has to have been written in the stars. Ask me anything you like. I won't skimp on the details. Still make it snappy. You're never more than 10 feet from a silver main guard. Why were you hiding in the snow? Me? You guys scared me to death. There I was, looking for relics to sell, when all of a sudden you came stomping over. I thought the silver main guards were paying me a visit. Seriously, though? Try treading a little lighter next time, huh? If you run into the guards, they won't hide in the snowdrift, and you'll be in a cell before you know it. Is there a settlement nearby? Settlement? What a literary turn of phrase. Why, there's only one place in this world where the living still reside. Our beloved Bellabog. The further away you get, the dicier things become. The city of preservation, the towering citadel, humanity's last bastion against the eternal freeze. It may sound a bit over the top, but those names are grounded in truth. The only place humans can eke out an existence is behind those impregnable walls. Okay. But I have no idea who the Silvermane guards even are. You really don't know? The Silvermane Guards are Bellabog soldiers, enforcers, and police. Let's just say they're not the most flexible of people. And they like paying visits to folks in our line of work. Seems like you guys really are new to the business. <laughs> to be young and naive again. How about this? As a senior in the field, which I'm sure you don't mind me saying, I'll give you some free guidance. There are ways of doing things in this profession, and you better get familiar with them. Moving in the shadows, finding the goods, pricing your stock, hiding from the guards. There's an art to all of it. No need. Why don't you just take us to the city? We don't really know the way. The city? Already? They haven't even started trading yet. Well, showing you the way is easy enough, Missy, but it would cost... It'll cost spearing. But, but it would be my pleasure. Kindness is Sampo Kosky's middle name. Follow me, friends, and uh, keep quiet. We don't want to be spotted by the guards. So why were you hiding from the Silvermane guards? Yeah, we're just storing a few relics away from prying eyes. Nothing serious. If it weren't for the uncompromising nature of our civil service, there'd be no need for secrecy. So, where about you guys from, anyway? I don't mean to pry or anything, I just care about my friends. No pressure. Wait. Alright, yeah. Clear Calyx one time. Okay. Activate or level up uh, character traces four times. Can I do with anything with traces? No.
Rule number seven, never leave a footprint. I have my own special technique called invisible snow walking. Helps me throw off pursuers in no, no time. Who are Straight they? into the guards. Uh, you remember the Silvermane guards I mentioned? That's them. Help me, old friends. I don't want to be caught. It's the suspect and his accomplices. Arrest them. It's now or never. Let me see. Never. Over to you, dear friends. Hey, where do you think you're? This song's just for you. Let's rock. Step aside. I have no interest in stoking conflict. Pretty good crowd today. Turn up the volume. You have the worst luck running into me. Watch this. Almost. Ow. <laughs> Clemency? Never heard of it. The truth of life and death. Reveal this sanctuary is but a vision. And boss fight. I, Japard Landau, captain of the Silver Main Guards, order you to relinquish your futile resistance. Ugh, that Sampo Who's cheated him? us all. Wait till I get my hands on him. Suspect, relinquish your resistance. For you. Ooh, uh, so I'm a criminal, huh? Forget Sampo. Wait until I get my hands on you. You're out. I guess I should have used the AOE variant. Stay right there while I give you a present. But I'm breaking him anyway. Ready to lose That's yourself? Fine. Fight it or rock with it. My music. Conquer us all. This ends here. And the prime suspect? The one with the blue hair? Apologies, Captain. We lost him during the pursuit. We can't find his footprints. <sighs> no matter. We have his accomplices. He'll be close by, plotting his next move. We're not his accomplices. Yeah, we'd never team up with someone like him. I'm not trying to talk our way out of this, but we're not friends with that scoundrel. Did you see how fast he ditched us? We rescued him from the snow out of the kindness of our hearts. We had no idea he might be using us to get past you. Are you really dumb enough to fall for his... I'm a captain, not an adjudication panel. As a Bellabog citizen, you have the right to defend yourself, but that can only take place under the scrutiny of the Architects, not now. Take them away. I don't even know what the Bellabog is. But we're not from Bellabog. Take a look at our clothes. Silence! What kind of nonsense are you? As you were. We must not be tempted into careless judgment. Look at their attire. Indeed, it is not in the Bellabog style. Exactly! Uh, and we even have photos! You've probably never seen what your planet looks like, right? I took this one. Behold, Yarilo 6! My seven shows apart. You mean to say that this white ball? That's here? <laughs> That's our home? How can that... 
Hmm. It is said that a long time ago, strange visitors from beyond the sky would visit us here. But that after the eternal freeze, the blizzards made passage impossible. And Bellabog would cease to witness such arrivals. Strange visitors, aka interstellar travelers. But these people are... This decision is beyond us. If what they say is true, then only the Supreme Guardian may decide their fate. Our job is to present them before her. Nothing more. Outsiders, follow me. Bellabog lies beyond this blizzard. Nice. Welcome to Bellabog, the city of preservation. The last city on this planet. Hey, it feels like it got a bit warmer. That's because you're in Bellabog, the last bastion of humanity. Last bastion? <laughs> 700 years ago, monsters from beyond the sky set the world ablaze. The land was turned to scorched earth, with raging infernos and billowing towers of smoke stretching beyond the horizon. In the midst of the conflict, the eternal freeze descended without warning. Suddenly, sweeping winds brought blizzards which buried the invading legion. Bellabog was all that remained. The steadfast architects built this city. Under the protection of Klepoth, the preservation, Bellabog remains forever warm in the face of unrelenting cold. Klepoth being uh, one of the eons. He sure saying some weird stuff. A marked change in tone. It sounds like he's quoting from a historical record. Uh-huh. So why is he telling us all this? You wanted to know. Uh <laughs> Ever night. We saw strange creatures outside the city. They must have come from a Terran corroded space. A fragmentum, correct? How do you... That's right. Out there in the blizzard, there are still many threats, including the monsters you saw. The Silver Main Guards are continuously engaged with the enemy, but I'm afraid the situation is bleak. After your meeting with the Supreme Guardian, I would like to consult you on this matter. We're lacking in intel. Okay, one moment. Pom Pom wants something. I feel you haven't been back at Express since forever. It has been a while. It has been a while, I'm starting to forget what Pom Pom looks like. Doesn't be that long. Come back when you've got the time. Pom Pom has some things for you. The conductor's reports. Okay. Let's check it then. I guess I did level up. Tickets, please. Oh, Lunar. You're not the same person Popo first met. What's happened to you? I had a really fast growth spurt. The conductor's eyes never lie, Lunar. You are not the same person that you were. The same thing happened to March 7th when she first went out train blazing. How come... How can Pompom put this? It feels like you're more mature, more stable. More reliable. Pom Pom is sure of it. Pom Pom's got some small rewards for your growth. Skip the formalities, take it all. Pom Pom will keep an eye on your progress and keep preparing some small rewards for you. As for what those will be, 
We'll find out soon enough. Okay. You finally got some leisure time. Don't forget to grab some sleep when you're done wandering about. About Pom Pom, the express and its journeys. The outside world. Pom Pom does want to see it, however, the meaning of the journey lies not in how wonderful the scenery is outside, but in the people you travel with. Whether, whether it's me or passengers such as yourself, it's the same for all of us. We need to cherish cherish the companions who ride along with us. That will make the moments of joy and bonding along the way even more meaningful. You finally got some leisure. Interesting. About seven, March 7th, Pom Pom's ears. Out of all the passengers on the express, March 7th causes the most headaches for me. She always wants to tie my ears into bows. So whenever I see March with her camera in hand, Pom Pom will find an excuse to go to something else. Pom Pom's always really busy after all. You finally got some le Express facilities. There are different rooms on the express, so naturally there are different facilities as well. Of course the express has things like bathrooms, but when all the passengers overindulge on drinks from the food truck, they have to wait in line to use them. And why does everyone always leave their phones at the bathroom counter? It's so weird. I'm always finding people's phones there. You finally got some le About Tanhan Himeko's coffee. One of the things Bombom admires about Tanhan is that he actually that he can actually drink Himeko's coffee. He even complimented her on it a few times. I used to wonder if there was something wrong with Tanhan's taste buds, but later he mentioned to me in passing that he regards Himeko's coffee as an excellent tool to test his grit. Anyway, please don't mention any of this to Himeko. As the Express's navigator, she puts in a lot of work that goes unnoticed, so Pom Pom tries to not uh, be too hard on her. You finally got some leisure. Tanhan sleep. Passenger Dunhan sleeps in the archives. I don't know how he manages to get a good night's rest in that room though. I was always worrying that he'll catch a cold. But then Pom Pom made a discovery. The heat emanating from the server unit provides plenty of warmth. And since then, since Dunhan himself insists on sleeping there, Pom Pom decided to stop worrying about him so much. So it's uh, an AMD system. I... Okay, noted. He also said something about being able to sleep on the rope. Pom Pom don't know what they meant by that. Seems really strange if you ask me. You finally got some Himeko's hand blended coffee. Himeko is highly competent when it comes to fixing things. But then she's always pumping out this uninspired hand blended coffee. Pom Pom just doesn't get it. What was the word you used to describe her coffee? Black sludge, was it? Well, as it turns out, this is already the new and improved version of her coffee. The coffee beans are polished by hand with a monomolecular blade. Back in the old days, he would just use instant coffee powder. The amount of powder she used gave a whole new meaning to the phrase black sludge. You finally got some leisure. Honest, I really like coffee too. Fuel provides 60 trailblaze power. Oh, it's uh, energy. Okay. Well, let's go back. What is this? I guess it just wanted to uh, show me that it exists. Hmm. I'll need to record today's. We saw strange creatures outside the city. They must have come from a terra and corroded space. A fragmentum, correct? How do you? That's right. Out there in the blizzard, there are still many threats, including the monsters you saw. The Silver Main Guards are continuously engaged with the enemy, but I'm afraid the situation is bleak. After your meeting with the Supreme Guardian, I would like to consult you on this matter. We're lacking in intel. 
So that's what the chests look like here. Are there any more somewhere? No, there is one. The guards will notice if we stray too far off. Oh, I can't get to that chest yet. Does it also show the here? Yeah, there are ten treasure chests here. Oh, over here there were three treasure chests that I missed. Can I go over here? I can. So now there are actual items here. Let's go to the beginning. I guess uh, when I was in story mode, then uh, things didn't spawn. Oh, hello. Lost Raptor. Clemency? Never heard of it. Gotta try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move! The truth of life and death reveal this sanctuary is but a vision. Ch Christ. This song's just let's rock. My turn. <sighs> let's make it quick. Step aside. I got the trotter. <sighs> Past victories don't guarantee future ones. Another one. Clemency? Never heard of it. Oh, wrong target. You have the worst luck running into me. Watch this. Take this! Step aside. I have no in- <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Rules are made to be broken. Got it. Now, how do I find these chests? How can I even do that at the moment? Because it does say, say that there are two chests and a warp trotter here. Oh, there's the there's a chest. Clemency. 
ready to lose yourself? Never heard of it. Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. The truth of life and death revealed this sanctuary is but a vision. Step aside. I have no interest. The time is now. Pretty good crowd today. Turn up the volume. Stay right there while I give you a present. Ooh. Gotta try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move. Another lost trot there. How many are there? Clemency? Never heard of it. Windbreaker. Life and death with this sanctuary is but a vision. This song's just for you. <laughs> you have the worst luck running into me. <sighs> huh. I don't know if I have enough power to finish him off. Pretty good crowd. Let's oh, run. I do. Just about. <sighs> Past victories don't guarantee future ones. Yeah. Oh, there is a boss here. Yeah. I have a late team. That enemy certainly isn't friendly. Oh. Doesn't have a frost weakness, my bad. Move carefully. This song's just for you. Ready to lose yourself? Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. Let's make it quick. <laughs> Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> the truth of life and death. This sanctuary is but a vision. They're gonna go down. Let's rock. You have the worst luck running into me. Stay right there while I give you a present. Let's go. Gotta try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move. <laughs> Him. My turn. <sighs> More than that. Try that again. <sighs> you can't run. 
Pretty good crowd today. <laughs> Ready to lose yourself? Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. Let's make it quick. With me out here, how can we lose? The truth of life and death. With this sense, and he's broken. It's but a vision. <laughs> try hard Time sometimes. for the main event. Check out this awesome move. Go. Batter up. Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> Formidable foe defeated. Red name alert. Oh, shiny. Ooh, sparkly. Now we just need that um, trotter. I think, yeah, there is a warp trotter somewhere. I'm not sure where he could be. Oh, there. Hi. Step aside. I have no interest in stoking conflict. This song's just for you. Turn up the volume. With me out here, how can we lose? Truth of life and death revealed this sanctuary is but a vision. <laughs> Got him. Ready to lose yourself? Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. And got them too. Past victories don't guarantee future ones. That's three out of three.
Right. Now we can do the story. Hmm. I'll need to record today's note. We saw strange creatures outside the city. They must have come from a Terran corroded space. A fragmento, correct? How do you... That's right. Out there in the blizzard, there are still many threats. Including the monsters you saw. The Silver Main Guards are continuously engaged with the enemy. But I'm afraid the situation is bleak. After your meeting with the Supreme Guardian, I would like to consult you on this matter. We're lacking in... in We're here. This is Klepoth Fort, the heart of Belabog and headquarters of the Architects. The Architects? The saviors of humanity. Long before the arrival of the Eternal Freeze, the Architects braved the doubts and derision of the people, never wavering from their construction of its defenses. History has proven that their decision was the correct one. The Architects named this fortress after Klepoth, Eon of Preservation. Under their direction, humanity has withstood external enemy attacks and held off the Eternal Freeze. Even today, we resist the Fragmentum's corrosion. This fortress is also the residence of the Supreme Guardian. The Supreme Guardian? The leader of Bellabog, elected and appointed by the Architects. The Supreme Guardians have watched over this city for generations, sheltering the people from harm. The current Guardian is Madame Kakolia Rand. Every major strategic decision is issued by her. Whoa, she sounds like a big deal. I will now bring you to see Madame Kakolia. Please, have your words at the ready. Her time is precious, so she prefers concise communication. Uh, we're gonna see her right now? Can I at least find a place to freshen up first? Is there any etiquette we have we need to observe? Rest easy. The Madam Guardian doesn't care about formalities. Not to mention, you've only just arrived. It would be unexpected if you were familiar with Bellabog customs. I've dispatched a messenger to send word. Madam Kakolia will be aware of your arrival. Come with me. Okay. But that's a meaningless sacrifice. How can you... <clears throat> you may leave, Branya. Visitors have arrived. <sighs> yes, Mother. Madam Guardian, I have brought three outsiders to see you. Outsiders, aka okay. interstellar travelers. The messenger informed me. Well done, Jepard. You may leave. Welcome, visitors from beyond the Eternal Freeze. Or perhaps I should say, from beyond the sky, no? <laughs> I am Kakolia Rand. Bellabog Supreme Guardian. I would be grateful if you could tell me why you have come. So you believe we come from beyond the sky? Do you wish me to doubt it? Or perhaps you're not confident in that identity yourself? <laughs> no, I do not doubt it. I can see that you are not from this world. The Architects remember the history well, else we should forget it. I know that in the distant past, before the Eternal Freeze descended or the Legion invaded, this world was once prosperous beyond measure. An eon connected our planet to other worlds, and we discovered the endless possibilities of the boundless universe. We also came to know of Klepoth, the Amber Lord. Under their attentive gaze, we built the city walls. For some reason, this uh, particular line seems to have been recorded in a different room. So do not be surprised. For 700 years, the Architects have received no further communication from the stars. But I knew of your existence. Tell me why you have come. We want to help you. We came here for something known as a Stellaron. A Stellaron? 
objects that fell from the blue on separate worlds. Their appearance spelled disaster. Many of the planets we visited have suffered their effects. You mentioned invasion by the Antimatter Legion. Soon after their arrival, this planet suffered the Eternal Freeze. At the same time, the phenomenon known as Fragmentum Space Corrosion began to occur. Correct? Correct. The Eternal Freeze is a product of the Stellaron. Stellarons bring about different disasters on different worlds, but every world seeded with a Stellaron will give birth to Fragmentums. You can see us as kind-hearted interstellar public servants, lending a helping hand to any world affected by a Stellaron. <laughs> Your analysis of our current circumstances is clear. We have indeed suffered the disasters you speak of, some of which prove vexatious to us even today. But why should you care? Even if this Stellaron you speak of did bring about disaster, I fail to see its connection to you. I don't believe that anyone would go to such lengths to help a world unrelated to them. Unless they had something to gain. You're right. Our reason for coming here is not purely selfless. If we don't seal the Stellaron, we cannot leave this planet. Please help us locate the Stellaron. If we can get rid of it, your world will be safer too. You know how to seal the Stellaron. We have the relevant means. Very well, I believe you. If our present situation is truly the result of this so-called Stellaron, then your arrival is the hope that Bellabog has waited 700 years for. I am willing to assist you in any way possible to help you locate the Stellaron. <sighs> it's getting late, and you must be tired. I will arrange for you to stay in our most comfortable hotel. Rest there and get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow at noon, I will dispatch someone to escort you here, and we can discuss this urgent matter in greater detail. Thank you, Supreme Guardian. It should be me thanking you, visitors from beyond the sky. I too need some time. I will go over our records for anything that may be connected to Stellarons. Please excuse me for not escorting you further. Of course, I understand. Do not worry. I have a way. It seems that the Supreme Guardian holds you in high regard. I have received orders that your movements are no longer to be restricted. Is what it is, Nabal. You know, I didn't think things were gonna go that smoothly. <laughs> I'm afraid I still have duties to attend to. I must return to my post. I hope you enjoy your stay in Bellabog. Uh, wait! Can you recommend some sites? It's not that late. We want to take a look around. Well, I'd say that Golden Theater and the History Museum are both worth a look. However, you'd need a pass to get into the museum. I recommend you visit Everwinter Monument first. It's Bellabog's most symbolic landmark. And if you enjoy music, you could head to Neverwinter Workshop. You can sometimes catch an outdoor performance there. The artist is... <sighs> You'll see. Oh, and if you're staying at Goethe Hotel, please avoid the alley that runs next to it. The one with Silvermane Guard stationed there. It started to be affected by corrosion recently, so it's been sealed off. So the corrosion is inside the city. That's a grave situation. Yes, we're mounting a resistance as we speak. I must leave now. I hope all goes well for you. Okay. So, about that chest down here. Hmm. There's 
has knowledge of this in the databank. What is this? Trash can. A trash can. Not remarkable in any way. You've been staring at it for a while, but it's just an ordinary trash can. Uh, what do you want to do? I try to hold back the urge to open it. What? As you continue staring at the trash cans, they seem to turn before your very eyes. The edges are no longer rusty and the dents are smoothed over. From under the lid comes a faint golden glow, sweet and alluring. For a moment the trash cans turn into treasure chests. And it's happening again. We take a deep breath and open the lid. It's empty. Wait. We reach deep deeper into the trash can. There's a piece of iron scrap on the bottom. Your hard work paid off. You finally found the treasure. You look back at uh, your companions and see their complicated expressions. You don't need to explain, I get it. That urge is too great for you to resist. There's no turning back once you've walked down this path. What the hell? A trash can. Four star. Avatar obtained from completing hidden missions in Yarilo 6. Or Yarilo 6. Guys who can laugh at themselves usually have plenty of friends. Why are you cursing out? An unusually large paper ball. Upon unfolding you find it contains wrinkled scraps of paper. 1. I hereby tender my resignation. On this my final day of work, I. I hereby tender my resignation on this. My final day of work, I wish to be frank. Generally speaking, my job is uninteresting, and so... I hereby tender my resignation on this. My final day of work, I wish to be frank. Generally speaking, my job is uninteresting and therefore has no meaning. Look at it. Time for work. A few typos away from a new career. Don't get close without courage. Just a trash can. A Bellapog trash can. Great place to hide something. Okay. Interesting. Right, let's check this area. Found another chest. A poster for the fairy tale play, Leisha and Mr. Trude, Mrs. Trude. You notice Mrs. Trude is missing from the poster. Perhaps her skeletal appearance, frightful hair, long nails, and tattered clothes aren't the best recipe for a box office hit. On the way to the old witch's house, something. Three nights, the witch calls them my dawn, my son, and my knight. As if Mrs. Trude is about able to something. Or through day. Let's take all the achievements. More. And also, book. Didn't I just pick up a book? Oh, they are. Oh, interesting. They are separated. I didn't even notice that here. So these are all on the space station. Roadside picnic program. Interesting. Opening date November 5th. The Golden Theater, 22 Fest West Alisa Avenue Administrative District. The most talked about theater production in Bellapok this year. Roadside picnic. Anton's family ha was having a simple suburban roadside picnic, but ended up bringing bizarre treasures to the mall kingdoms. 
a big pot that can be feed an entire clan, a red flower that can eat everything, and a strange black slate that gives odd oracles. An amazing conflict broke out between the mole kingdoms because of these treasures. And when Anton's family left, the mole kingdoms that fought over the ownership of the treasures had turned to peace. Colliard's award for best theater production, an amazing cast that exceeds your imagination. The legendary Bellopoc author Marjorie's first cross-media production. The fifth Colliard's award for best theater direction, director, Martin. Colla Colliard's award for best actor in a play, Alan. Colliard's award for best upcoming actor in a play, Ruby, presents Producer Louise, Casting Director Miranda, Action Director Stan, Artistic Director Jacob, Choreographer Frank, uh, med uh, Media Liaison, Liaison, Matthew, Sound Design Bernice, Set Designer Anya, Lighting Carol, Theater Manager Gary, and then the cast. Paddington, The Mole King, Callan, Gloria the Mole Queen, Ruby, Ted the Mole Prince Max, Madeleine the Mole Princess Rosaline, Todd the Mole Schemer Matt, Elizabeth the Mole Schemer's wife, Maya, Wayne the Mole Typhoon Bruce, Parker the Mole Inventor Peter, Anton the Head of the Family William, Alexei Anton's son Rudolf, Rusha, Anton's wife, Martha. Okay. Will be interesting to find the rest. Hey, mailbox. A red mailbox with a corner of a white letter sticking out. This letter is unfortunately stuck. Take it out. You carefully nip the letter out with your fingers. The envelope includes the following. Dear kind-hearted soul, can you please buy me a stamp and post it for me? A thousand thanks. You open the letter. There's a short message on the edge of some newspaper. Sister, please send me 50 shield ASAP. Love from her dear brother. What? Mr. Leveled Letter 1. Maybe someone in the overworld can help you with this unsent letter. The big red mailboxes are like burning torches in the frost of Bellabog. Yeah. Celine. Sorry, I didn't notice there were people around. I'm not disturbing, am I? You have a great voice. Okay, I shall continue warming up my voice. Oh no. The play isn't open to the public yet. I better not spoil it. I'm so for forgetful. Anyway, the play is still in rehearsal. I'm the leading actress's voice. If you like the song, we can meet again in the theater. I'd like to know more about Tamila. You're as curious as a child, but I don't have much to offer. Although Tamila's voice is a bit deep, her acting and singing skills are not much of a problem. She's got a lot of fans. It's just that she seems to be unhappy with me, which I'm a little confused about. Why is she unhappy with you? I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but during the rehearsals recently, I felt that Tamila didn't want to lip sync. Also, uh, I shouldn't say this, but I don't feel comfortable with Tamila's recent public criticism of the lyrics. Although the songs she criticized were for her character, I was responsible for the voiceover. It just feels like she was aiming that at me. Have I done something to get on her bad side? Musicals need voiceovers? Usually no, but the director insisted that I do the voiceover for Tamila's songs. He said Tamila's voice isn't catchy and girly enough. This is my private affair, please don't be bothered by it. Okay. Why don't you perform on stage yourself? I've been thinking about that lately. I want to set I want to set foot on a new path. I have loved singing since I was a, a little girl. I could sing all day long, no matter what the song is. Did anything happen between the two of you? I don't think so. 
We teamed up a few times and it always went well. As for outside of the theater, well, Tamirla is a star after all, so I really don't have much contact with her. I don't know m what she would be mad about. Maybe I'm just overthinking it, it's probably just because you have different perspectives. Maybe she's jealous of your voice. Shh, don't speak so rashly. Tamila's voice is deep, but I think it's very touching, especially when she's singing lyrical type songs. For example, the contralto in Back to the Night is something that's beyond me. I saw... Oh. Sorry. Oh, I can read back. Good. Tamila is a natural... For example, the... Contralto in Back to the Night is something that's beyond me. I saw the tears in your eyes tonight. Will you still love me after dawn? Tamila is a natural beauty and she has a great stage presence. I'm sure she isn't jealous of me. Let's not think too negatively about people. Okay. If you say so. What did I find now? Once upon a snow siege country program. Oh, this is another one of these. Uh, let's uh, go through it slowly first. Opening date January 11th, the Golden Theater. A magnificent new year. Offering uh, from the Golden Theater operate. Operatic Division. Once upon a snow siege country, the new Supreme Guardian was checking historical records in the clip, clip of Fort on a snowy night. The history of, our, of the architects constructing Pelopoque was passed down in every generation. However, on that night, this story slept off the page before the new Supreme Guardian to recount past tales. They recounted the resolve when the city was first founded. The unexpected wars and the confusion and anxiety not recorded in history. Their happiness and troubles were all displayed on the snowy night. Colliard's award for best opera director. Yeah. Opening. So this is the concert program. Opening has one song. Act one, two and three all have three. Oh, all of them have three. Interesting. And there is another one. Time change notice for oratorio rehearsal. To all members of the Colliards Chorus, the rehearsal for next Tuesday has been rescheduled due to the Golden Theater heating device maintenance. The adjustment details are as follows. The chorus rehearsal originally scheduled to start at the 9.30 on Tuesday has been changed to 13.30 due to maintenance. Lunch will not be provided for this rehearsal. The orchestra will not participate in this rehearsal because all instruments have been moved for maintenance. Please wait for further notices. Due to soprano Tatiana's accidental injury and hospitalization, soprano Celine will be taking her parts in the play. As the date for the official performance draws near, rehearsal time will be extended by 3 to 4 hours. The theatre has arranged for transportation to ensure all members reach home safely. For those that live far from the theatre you may apply for accommodations at the Goethe Hotel. Please inform each other, make sure everyone has read the notice and make the proper arrangements accordingly. Collier's Chorus Administrative com a Committee, November 22, 699 AF. What does AF mean? There is one more over here. Relation Mrs. Truth's program. Go 
Golden Theater, adopted from the most popular fairy tale in Pelopak for 30 years. Leisha and Mistress Trude, Trude. The beautiful girl Leisha asked for a fire from a the aloof miss witch, Mrs. Trude, to warm her poor family. On the way to the old witch's place, Leisha met three knights. The witch referred to the knights as my dawn, my sun, and my evening. Mrs. Trude wanted a Trude, I think Trude sounds better. Wanted Leisha to complete three adventures impossible for normal people. With the help of the three knights, how would Leisha complete the witch's difficult quest? A happy piece of Oh, a happy piece of work that can be enjoyed by the whole family. Okay. I'm guessing that there will be more books on this side. Yep, I can already see one. Oh, there only is one. That's fine then. Beneath the White Cloak program. A classic musical in production for 30 years, Beneath the White Cloak, an absurd rumor passes through the room as an unexpected guest arrives at the noble's feast. She wears a mask chiseled out of ice and a cloak the color of hoarfrost, bringing uh, horrid death everywhere she goes. The new theater manager tries hard to serve the nobles, and that when an opera opens a guest in white appears in box number 5 without an invitation, and the century-old tale resurfaces in this grand color. The longest running show in the history of the Golden Theatre, a special 30-year commemorative performance with a brilliant never before seen cast. And more mysterious guest performances presented by the Golden Theatre Musical Department. And there is a trash can. The inside of this trash can is good as new. You have never seen a trash can this green before. In fact, you have never seen anything this green before. This trash can is like the universe's very incarnation of purity. Maybe you are going too far. Investigate carefully. We take a look at it. The inside of this trash can is dust free and perfectly dark. It's the kind of pure darkness that surrounds... Surrounds a ninth in a nebula of dark matter. It focuses your attention and your eyes become fixi fixed on it. You see yourself, you see March 7th and Danhan. You see the fate of the Astral Express and the end of the future. You force yourself to stop staring and everything disappears. It feels like a fantasy dream. What's up? What's in there? What's with your expression? Nothing, you decided to tell her. I don't miss anything, nothing worth looking at. The metal pole of this lamp has already begun to crack. Is every trash can in this city... ...interactable? If so. Two trash cans, one for recycling dry garbage and one for recycling wet garbage. So, where would you throw a coconut husk? Try. Correct. Coconut shell doesn't rot and it's not toxic. You can't recycle it either, so it belongs to the dry garbage. You immerse yourself in the choice of sorting garbage. Nervous man. A quiet and foreboding wrought iron fence blocks the way. Um, quiet isn't the right word to describe it, because at this moment you seem to hear faint muttering. Venture no closer, no closer, the iron gate seems to say. Then again, the voice could come from the nervous man behind the gate. 
I approached him to ask why on earth he's, he's playing ventriloquist for the quest gate. Answer no closer to me. Might I ask why you're talking to yourself? Are you asking me? I was simply too nervous to have noticed and truly sorry. What are you nervous about? It's the ba back alley. Have you not heard? Some ghostly goings on have been happening in the back alley recently. The back alley? Oh, are, are you not a resident of this neighborhood? The back alley is an alleyway behind the theater. It's where we poor people live. Ghosty goings on? I, I'm not sh too sure about the details. I just know that they, they are among us. And they have gotten their hands on some, on some of the residents. You don't have to be this polite with me. Oh, uh, thank goodness. It's all because of this gate. The neighbors and I wish to leave this place too, but we can't seem to get it open at all. All we can do is some out, come out occasionally for some fresh air. Oh, it's getting late and I have to return. Just my luck, this blasted back alley. The man up ahead mutters some confusing words as his head shakes incessantly. Before disappearing into the shadows of the theater. What a strange man. I wonder if I'll run into him again. This iron gate looks like it's concealing the biggest secret of the universe. A few tins labeled Bellowbox Sausage, an unopened bottle of Jim Roger bread soda, a copy of the Crystal Daily with Supreme Guardian Coca-Cola on the front page, surrounded by Silverman cards, crumpled paper ball, some withered flowers whose thermal dome is broken. To understand the city, go through its trash cans. Don't you dare waste it. What? Get Jim Roger bread soda from a trash can. Of course that's an achievement. Oh, hi Tamila. Don't leave me alone. Take me with you. I've been waiting for you to show me the ring. Love is our destiny. Say the word, baby. Uh, um, can I help you with something? I'm just passing by. Don't mind me. Don't mind you how? I don't like being stared at when re rehearsing. How do you perform in front of your audience then? Rehearsal is different from the real, real thing. Ah, you look a little strange. You're not some journalist from who knows where, are you? I don't have any exclusive insider information to read. But it doesn't matter either way. The mill of the Golden Theater is always open to being interviewed. Is there a problem? As you can probably tell, my voice is rather low pitched. The director is not very happy about that, so the theater hired the voice actress to assist me. She's impeccable indeed, but I too was professionally trained, never missed a day of practice. Now I have to lip sync and act as if in a silent film. I can't help but think that maybe one day they'll get rid of me altogether. What do you think I should do? Maybe find a project that suits your voice better. I'm afraid it's not that easy. You might not know this, but musical artists only look good on stage for a very limited amount period of time. Once their physics change or their voice becomes coarse, they have to beat the stage farewell. They'll call it spending more time with the family, but everyone knows that's the end of their career. We'll have to challenge that. Even if the theater agreed with me, the audience would not buy it. They have been quite honest in likes and dislikes. But you do have a point. People should be less judgmental. Work on your acting. That won't do. People come to musicals for their songs. How embarrassing would it be if a musical performer could sing with their own song voice? Ridiculous. I'll be like... Thespians who can't remember their lines and need others to read out the script for them. Hello. Why not try acting in a play? 
both are theatrical arts, true, but the skills they require are hardly transferable. Plus, musicals have always been my passion. I don't want to simply give up like this, I still want to give it a go. So, maybe you need to find a way to get your voices fired. No, I want to keep my job fair and square. I have no interest in theater politics. She's one of us after all. I hope she will see her dream come true on stage one day. Okay. No worries. Thanks for listening to me. I feel much better already. Let's keep this conversation a secret. Embers. A record. So I got extra music. Is there another trash can over here? No. How far can I go here? Not far. Lila, zoologist. Hmm, you look special. What's that supposed to mean? Well, besides the hair, you appear to be normal. But the way you dress isn't the norm around here. Those patterns are rarely seen, and there's no trace of trollium jelly on those thin fingers and face of yours. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. My name is Lila. I'm a writer for The Voyager and also a zoologist. Oh yes. I've just been rambling on. You probably haven't read the Underground Encyclopedia of Zoology. Zoology, right? These interesting books on zoological science can't be found on the market. So here, take those two books. Read them when you have the time. I want to ask. What creatures are there in Bellabog? Cats and dogs. There are wolves and birds in the wild, that's about it. I have to check out the museum's specimens to see what other kinds of animals there were in the past. I heard that hundreds of years ago Bellabog had domestic domesticated bears and dire wolves roamed the wild. They are no longer around though. But I believe there are other animals out there that survived the eternal freeze. I just have no way to prove it. Now I have no choice but to study humans. Did you know that humans in Bellabog have at least three different origins? But they don't seem to belong to any of them. That's why I was su so surprised back then. You're right. I'm an alien. Ah, I must have been researching too much. Ever since I got my hands on that book, my head's been in the clouds. What book? This underground encyclopedia of zoology was apparently brought back from the underground by a Silverman guard. It talks about a lot of strange creatures. Ever since I finished the book, I couldn't stop thinking about how these animals must look like. I really want to know more about these crystalline lizards. Um, Geomero Olms, or Geomero Olms, Funeral Worms. I want to know what they eat, how they reproduce, everything. Why don't you go look for them? I've been outside the city a few times for journalism, but there wasn't enough spare time to do ecological research then. But recently I met the benefactor who is willing to finance my expedition as long as his requirements are met. He's even willing to take care of the expedition permits and formalities as well. I'm already making preparations for the expedition. If you see any rare species in the future, remember to tell me about them. Okay. I got the new book. Also an achievement. Underground Encyclopedia Animals. Oh, I got the whole thing.
Part 1. Crystalline Lizards In old legends, crystalline lizards were thought to be soldiers of mine mama. Okay. Crystalline lizard is a cold-blooded reptile found in the underground mines. As it matures into adulthood, their leathery scales will produce crystalloid, which will vary in color depending on the region, temperature and health of the lizard. Experts have pointed out that crystalline lizards expel geomarrow and other minerals from their salt glands through the osmotic pressure in the body. The crystalloid is a byproduct of regulating the osmotic balance of body fluids. The randomness of the crystalloid color has sparked a wave of collectors who are willing to pay exorbitant prices for wild crystalline lizards with the rare color. This has caused an ecological imbalance in the mines. In the past, many pest outbreaks have been tied to the decline in the crystalline lizard population. In response, Bellabog has prohibited the hunting of wild crystalline lizards. The alkaloids in the body fluid of the crystalline lizard are often used in pharmaceutic pharmaceutics. Pharmaceutics something. This body fluid is dissolved in water and made, made into a spray. When the spray is applied to a patient, the droplets reach the pulmonary alveoli via the upper respiratory tract and are shown to drive out mineral dust in the lung via the bronchi. Preventing the dust from entering the interstitial lung and lymph nodes, researchers however do not understand fully how this process works. Thus, it is common for underworld doctors to breed crystalline lizards in captivity, but they don't have any value to the collectors. Geomara Olm This amphibian survives solely on pure energy. Geomara Olm is an amphibian that burrows near the underground water sources. With the white and pink feathery scales and its highly developed hearing and smell make up for its degraded vision. It's able to survive both on land and in the water. According to the Geomara Development Group, populations of Geomara Olm were always found near large mines, for un reasons unknown. People assume that these Olms fed on Geomara, hence the name. Biologists have pointed out that the Geomara Olms live in an environment, in an environment lacking in food. This severe environment has caused them to evolve into organisms with superior metabolism and antioxidant capacity. They are capable of surviving without food for up to 10 years due to their slow metabolism and limited movement. However, it is scientifically reasonable to assume that they could survive more than 15 years without feeding. So experts believe that it is more likely that their feeding behaviors are hard to observe rather than draw the conclusion that they feed on geomarrow. Every time uh, a fictional um, creature is created that uh, can survive lo for a long time, long periods of times on something or without something. It's always in extremes like 10 years or 100 years or something like that. Gionaro Maro Olms by nature are, are afraid of and reside away from the humans in darker and more moist areas. The Geomara Olms do not pose a threat to humans. Funeral Worm When it's time to bury a corpse, these worms never pass up the opportunity for a feast. Funeral Worms are a sub subspecies of uh, Coleoptera, commonly found in underground caves. They range in lengths of up to 3.5 cm, with an average length of 1.2 cm. They are usually black and orange in appearance. Their flat soft bodies allow them to crawl under animal carcasses. After discovering a potential animal carcass, they gather in swarms around the body. They spend a great deal of time confirming that the animal is dead before they dig the ground beneath it to decompose it. Fine funeral worms observing a dead animal is similar to attending a funeral, hence the name. Some biologists have suggested their unique habits may be related to creatures who barely move, like the Geomarrow Holm. If they mis misjudge prey, they might become prey themselves. 
General worms are one of the most important parts of underground's ecology, breaking down carcasses and feces of a wide range of animals. They are also commonly found in cemeteries and bat caves. Part 2 Crystal Scorpion. Crystal Scorpions don't have crystals. Isn't it common knowledge? Adult Crystal Scorpions are almost entirely covered with highly transparent carapaces, growing up to 5 or 6 centimeters long. The body is clearly segmented into two, head and chest and the abdomen. There are six pairs of appendages on the head and chest. The first pair is used for feeding. The second pair is threatening grab like claws for attacking and defending, and for touching things. The remaining appendages are all used for a moment. The abdomen is the scorpion tail, which is bent forward and poisonous. The venom is not lethal to humans, but it will cause a burning sensation. The transparent carapace, for which the crystal scorpion is famous, turns out to be a mimicry of Geomero and not some expensive crystal. While Geomero dust is processed from the body, it assimilates with the hard shell to form this unique transparent shell. With its help, crystal scorpions can feed on crystal lizards, who live near Geomero. During the period in which crystal lizards were hunted by collectors, crystal scorpions were also hunted. As a result, their population was reduced significantly to the point where they are now considered a rare and endangered species. They are traded at high prices in underground markets. Mad moles. I can't help but wonder what would happen if I had the misfortune of stumbling into their burrow while exploring the dark depths of a cave. The mad moles have stout of powerful limbs and well-developed claws which are good for digging. However, they would much prefer to use their head and teeth. Their eyes are completely defunct, with little or no vision. They have no outer ear, and the ear shell is a small fold of skin around the ear hole, with short tails that are slightly longer than their hind feet. Their moles are usually bare or a little hairy. People once thought they fed primarily only on plant roots, but it is now common knowledge that they are omnivores. Ecologists have discovered that mad moles have a number of distinct characteristics that are detrimental to the species' survival. Now researchers believe that the rapid spread of fragmentum is the, at the root of these characteristics. Man moles appear to be more sensitive to the specific substance in fragmentum than other species. As a result, they have become extremely aggressive with the ability to swarm and devour mammals several or even dozens of times their size. Then, it is the never-ending hell of survival. Man moles rarely leave, leave their burrows, but keep expanding them because of two factors. First, mad moles have a severe sensitivity to specific substances in the surface atmosphere, making it impossible for them to survive outside of their burrows. Second, the fragmentum hastens the deterioration of their limited habitat. As a result, man moles must keep searching for new habitats underground. If an unfortunate creature were to fall into its burrow, the moles would eat it. If there were no such creatures, they would eat each other. There will, will always be a massive pile of bones in the man moles' burrows. However, their remarkable reproductive capacity more than compensates for their low survival qualities. Even if the man moles population is artificially reduced to a small, very small number, it still can quickly recover after a few months. There was once an unfortunate miner who used to hear the moles scurrying behind the wall every night as he slept. He would experience chronic hallucinations and nightmares. Even when clear-headed, he would mumble in a language that no one could understand. Fortunately, the large burrow was connected to the stove in the kitchen. 
one night suit which hadn't been completely bur completed burned out burned out no hadn't been completely burned out caught on fire and exterminated the mad moles that miner was saved from a gruesome fate rock crab there's no way this critter could have nearly destroyed Bellabog. The rock crab, a mix between a shrimp and a crab, likes to live inside rocks, and many of them use hard rocks as a shell for protection. According to research, the rock crab originally lived along the coastal regions. They were oceanic creatures that would dig through rocks to lay their eggs, then return to the sea. After the ice age, the rock crab spread in large numbers and moved underground to the warmer Bellabog, causing massive tunnel collapses as they migrated. During this period they were known as tunnel rock crabs. However, for reasons unknown, their population declined significantly almost to the point of extinction. Ex extinction. Nowadays, rock crabs are considered a gourmet meal in the underworld. Although the crab is rare and difficult to obtain, the delicious texture of its meat makes it the star ingredient in the underground. People usually st steam the crab, but there are many other variations that are allowed by residents. Stir-fried crab meat with hammer peppers, salt-baked rock crab, and much more. Rock crab powder can also be combined with a variety of other ingredients for rich flavors. With the dwindling rock crab population nowadays, many people doubt the old rumor that every family eats crab. Interesting. I think I will take a small break. For about... 10 minutes. So I'll be back. 